at the side of me here is a goat sallow the very top of a goat sallow only a few days ago this pile of brush here was 30 odd feet in the air at the top of said goat sallow i have no idea how it's got into this particular state honestly I suppose before I let this video go on any further, I'd better just do something of an introduction as to how I happen to be sat next to the top of this particular goat sallow, which as you can see is now in bits. Well, the reason is that this goat sallow has been felled and this is my handiwork for the last two, almost three hours meticulously going through it just to check that there were no or are no purple emperor caterpillars overwintering on it if there were could have rescued them this video is about me taking this to pieces and creating this marvelous work of art at the side of me i hope they don't want me to put it all back together again turning out to be a glorious late February morning. Clear blue skies after a rather cold and frosty start and the sun is now becoming pleasantly warm and encouraging a few insects to appear and fly about. However, the job I've got today has been created a few days ago and the log that I'm sat on was until a few days ago a standing goat sallow. The problem with having a goat sallow that was standing, that was growing next to an old ancient oak. How scandalous is that? And so that oak has been haloed around, which involves removing everything growing within about a five metre radius of the oak itself. So that's left me with a sorting job. The sorting job's over there. And that's the top of this goat sallow because this goat sallow is growing in a prime position for purple emperor females to lay their eggs on and as it's now gone thankfully the top has been left there and I can sort it out and have a look for any overwintering L3 purple emperor larva and then move them to a place of safety if there are indeed any on there may not be because this particular sallow was all trunk up to about 20 feet so if there are purple emperor larva or were purple emperor larva at the top of this tree it'll mean that we've learnt a little bit and that females will lay higher in the tree than where we've recorded larva it's going to take me a while to sort through this lot Now you may be wondering why, after complaining about the tree being cut down, why I'm then proceeding to rip it up even more. Well, the answer to that is that it makes no difference now as to whether I'll leave this like this in one big pile of brush or I break it up and breaking it up what I've searched and throwing that over there means that although it's very systematic and methodical that's the only way I can go about this and hope to save any purple emperor larva 
which may happen to be on here. There may not be any on this particular tree. So I need to check it all. And it's not just the ends, because typically purple emperor larva are usually between second and fourth or fifth bud down from the end of the shoot. But as we've seen in videos before, they can get in the joints and even along the old leaf scars. And I've got to do this over the whole of what was the tree. I need to be thorough. very slow going can't rush it but not found anything as yet which is a good thing if I get right to the end and having gone through the pile that you saw initially without finding a purple emperor larva I will be pleased I'm gonna be here for a while go and make a cup of tea if I were you oh you can bring me one as much as I may joke and make light-hearted comments this is a situation that quite frankly shouldn't be in it shouldn't have been downed in the first place not when not four or five meters across the path there are sweet chestnuts and i know which is the most useful of the two trees and it's not sweet chestnut it may well seem a rather pointless exercise doing this just to find or make sure that there aren't a couple of small one centimeter long caterpillars on here but those caterpillars are of what is still a very rare butterfly the purple emperor There are many wildlife trusts and conservation bodies which have nature reserves north of Nottinghamshire that would die to have such a species on one of its reserves. And so I'm just doing a little bit to help the Purple Emperor population here at Sherwood in much the same way as Nick and Samantha Brownlee have done the same. They're the ones that have put Sherwood Forest well and truly on the Purple Emperor map and it shouldn't be forgotten that. And if I can find one caterpillar on here, preferably none at all, and save that caterpillar, move it to somewhere safe, a safer location and a safer tree, then I'll have done my little bit for the purple emperor we're all encouraged to plant nectar bearing flowers in our gardens or leave a small patch for nettles for the likes of small tortoiseshell and peacock this is just similar to that but perhaps a little bit different but it's still worth it for such a butterfly
it's very difficult to not start to rush doing something like this that's why women are better off doing this than blokes are and that's not being sexist or anything women are more meticulous than blokes blokes tend to rush everything and so being aware of that Dillis is far more meticulous at finding anything and searching through something than I ever was and so I'm trying to be as thorough as I can and it's another reason why it's so important is that about 30 yards up from where I am there's a tree one particular sallow not a tall sallow like this one was and that has or had five L3 purple emperor lava on it so only within a few yards and the tree less than that about 15 meters away has been used in previous years so it's important that I am methodical the ideal result apart from this tree having been left in the first place and not cut down would be to find no lava at all and let's hope one way or the other the only damage that's been done is unfortunately to a goat sallow and not some purple emperor lava well I'm still here I've gone over half of the branches still quite a bit to to go through but thankfully I've not found anything but my pile of brash and twigs is gaining height nicely but it's the only way I can do this as best as possible to make sure that there's nothing on it Well, after the best part of two and a half, almost three hours, I've reduced the original pile to that brash heap of smaller twigs, pretty much the size of this. I've gone over as much as I can, at least today, and thankfully not found any purple emperor lava on this particular tree, which is good to know. Although, to be honest, this kind of thing shouldn't be happening. On the plus side, I suppose, if you're trying to find a plus side, the stump will almost certainly regrow and we may get a nice new healthy sallow until they come along and cut it down again when it's too big. But the only thing I have found of any invertebrate reference at all is a batch of eggs here. I haven't checked. They're very much laid in one of the yellow underwing fashion. So... I perhaps need to do a little bit of research, but it's a large egg batch here. And that's the only thing that I've found on this particular salad. So, thankfully, no purple emperor lava are found. None of damage, no effect to the population of L3 lava here, which, if I just give you a quick update, a total of 32 had been found at the last count but I believe six have now been lost out of that 32. But we shall see how that changes over the coming few months as we venture into spring. But thankfully, I didn't find a 33rd or a 34th purple ember lava on this particular goat sallow. It's just a shame that I had to resort to going through it to check. 